Ricardo. Hello. <laughs> God, <laughs> you guys fucked me, dude. Can I start? Can I start by reading back what what you you texted us today? Uh, yeah, you don't want to give an intro to this to this episode. <laughs> Listen, this is Ricardo. This is what Ricardo texted us today. What the fuck? Started watching a few minutes ago. Ah, what the fuck? Fuck you both. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> uh, that's yeah. how we how we start this. That's bitch fucked off. up, dude. <laughs> I'll be honest. I wasn't really even thinking that hard about this development as the season went on. Like I'll, I, I was actually really surprised with myself because I wasn't thinking of uh, like it was so far from my mind that I was really impressed that I didn't accidentally let it slip in casual conversation. <laughs> well, here we are. We're 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 here with this is newbie Star Trek, everyone, and um, Natasha Yar is dead. <laughs> God damn and it! Ricardo's first time through Star Trek, specifically TNG, right now, and uh, yeah, it's um. Natasha Yar died in a way that um they it wasn't originally planned this way, you know. It's not like Morph in X-Men or something, you know, where like oh he's supposed to die and thus stakes increase. Like she just died. This so. is this is both the coolest yet shittiest episode at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get we'll get more into it once we discuss it, but yeah. I found myself I think when I originally watched this episode, I thought of it the same way many Star Trek fans think of it. And then when I rewatched it, it, it I feel very differently about it now, um, hmm. which I think is really, I don't know why. I, I found it far more affecting than I thought it would be. But okay, anyway. So that's the difference. Yeah. It, it actually yeah. like got you this time. Yeah. I, 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 don't, know, I don't know if it's because I noticed details more or I just, there's a different context now with, you know, the way way the show is but the way we're going through the show you know instead of just catching random episodes like you used to um, oh true uh, true uh, anyway we're we're newbie star trek we're a podcast if you guys have been liking the podcast before we get into it uh <laughs> maybe you could you know leave us a review was on, that a sneeze on <laughs> no i was i was scoffing Snickering. Snickering. <laughs> i was scoffing uh, at more on, uh, <laughs> on apple podcasts or or podcast addict or wherever or don't it's fine. Yeah. You could just keep listening. But anyway, let's uh let's get into the meat of it because there's a lot going on. Dan, this episode, do you know when it came out? It came out in April 25th in 1988. So what are you going to tell us about what happened during that time? You liar. You told us we were going to get into the meat of it, but now we're just distracting <laughs> yeah. everyone with history. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, the meat this of the is podcast. Not the this, yeah. is like, this is like a bullshit appetizer. <laughs> <laughs> It's like you took us to Chili's and bought us a fucking sampler plate and nobody wants anything on it, dude. <laughs> no, it's like I got the egg rolls from like an American restaurant, you know, and you're like, Ugh, nobody wants these egg rolls. From Pew Chang's? <laughs> <laughs> yes, an American restaurant. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, uh, would you like would some you... foam in your drink? It's called a cup of kino, and you'll never <laughs> guess what it costs. Is that is this when it was invented? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry thought, to get your hopes up. <laughs> oh man, that would have been I, really good. I was good, like, though. I was like, did Arrested Development like <laughs> just do a historical event as part of a joke? <laughs> okay, uh, well, okay. Uh, getting down to history, so we can get out of it real quick. Um, I literally found only one thing that was of note to my brain. Um, in my search Brian. throughout that week, because remember, it's only been a week. Mm -hmm. um, the a recent uh, film release, Return of the Killer Tomatoes, starring a oh. young George Clooney, um, released in theaters that previous weekend. Um, I only thought it stood out because I know of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. It spawned <laughs> a nice large franchise of it's it's weird. Like, what the hell is the Killer Tomatoes franchise? It had like a cartoon. It had some movies. I don't know. It it 
it strikes me as family friendly trauma or something like that where it's kind of like, sort of but like the toxic avenger kind of had the same thing happen to him yeah toxic avenger really, became really family dirty. friendly yeah <laughs> no a toxic avenger was really dirty dude and no there's a friendly version like i guess because toxic- they did a cartoon. Uh, i think they, they, they did had a, a family friendly version called toxic crusaders yeah yeah sorry i get it mixed up whichever is which but th- yeah they made a fran- family friendly version for whatever reason which is weird they're, they're making they're, a family friendly version of like I don't know, like some sort of horror movie. <laughs> did, you say, did you say horror movie? My, my, <laughs> my brain just froze, dude. <laughs> you're, in a, you're in a movie full of whores. The horror movie. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, um, yeah, and, and it, it was just interesting to find a movie, like a kind of a shitty movie that George Clooney was in, so. That's the only a friend thing that stood out to a, me. A friend of ours edited a, a Killer Tomatoes movie. Oh, really? Or, or at least two of them. Uh, Beth Accomando. That's she, right. Yeah, she 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 uh, edited uh, Killer Tomatoes Strike Back and Killer Tomatoes Eat Friends, which nice. is a great name. <laughs> well, boy, am I glad I brought this up. Yeah, because I had forgotten about that. Shout yeah, outs yeah, to yeah. Beth. Yeah, Beth is awesome. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, we were she, just as a little... Con- like, she used to um, do... Um, thing called hobbit meals this is ricardo's favorite well don't say used to that's gonna offend her that's true she would like to do it again it's just we're in quarantine so we we would be doing it now if it wasn't for quarantine uh but yeah basically the way the hobbits describe all of the meals at the beginning of uh not the beginning the in in fellowship of the ring where they're like what about second breakfast and you know and then lunch and then ricardo's getting so angry (laughs) yeah Anyway, the concept is that you eat all the actual meals that a hobbit defines as like the seven meals of the day while watching the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy. It's like 11 meals. It's more than seven. It's like 11. A lot I of think meals. you're just confusing it with 11 Z's, which is one of the names of the meals. But there's more than that. There's more than seven. I think I, it's like. I, I get 32 Z's when I watch Lord of the Rings. Get to be sleepy. <laughs> 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 you got us. You got us. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's, it's seven meals, dude. Breakfast, oh, okay. second breakfast, elevensies, luncheon, afternoon tea, dinner, supper, done. Okay, I felt like we eat more, but okay. Well, anyway, it, it's seven goddamn meals. <laughs> Listen, well, what I've do you done want? That, I've done more. <laughs> uh, Under duress, is, I'm sure. <laughs> this was skin of evil. Um, last week, I mentioned that this was a pretty controversial episode amongst yes. uh, fans of Star Trek. Uh, now we know why. For Ricardo's sake, we didn't say anything, but it's because Tasha dies. And it's not just that she dies, it that is that she dies this way. It's um, very unceremonious. I think it's unceremonious yet appropriate. Personally. No, it's 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 jarring. It's I don't know, for lack of a better term, realistic. Yeah, and I think the show still finds a really great way to the, the episode finds a really great way to frame it anyway. Like, um, Anyway, before we get too much into that, Ricardo, yeah, what did you think? Having oh, <laughs> <laughs> this episode should have been called uh, "Venom Kills Lieutenant Yar." <laughs> yeah, it's Ven- It's a symbiote. Yeah. yeah, the last episode was called Symbiosis. I know. And then this, I know. But the symbiotes yeah. in this episode. <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot how much like a symbiote this or uh, this Armus thing was. It's it, it's a hundred percent. Venom, like you could, <laughs> you could start this and then go into. I mean, the movie was shitty, but you can go into the Venom movie as a sequel, and it Tom it, Hardy. it it fits it fits perfectly. Uh, Tom Hardly. Uh, <laughs> I mean, say what you want, but the the black suit was the best look for that shuttle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all I right. Get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So I'm sorry. The show starts off and. You think it's you're like oh I like where this is going. Uh, Lieutenant Yar is like hey there there's gonna be a, co- a martial arts competition and and uh, Worf's like hey are you prepared? Cobra are you Kai. prepared for the Cobra yeah. Kai for the All Valley <laughs> yeah, Karate exactly. Tournament? Yeah. And she's like yeah I think I'm I'm ready. She's like but I could use some uh, some sparring at the holodeck. And there's this this banter about who she's worried about facing, who she's not worried about facing, and th- this like battle banter is turning both of them on yeah like they're <laughs> yeah. like they're they're 
a couple they're like a sparring session away from just boning dude yeah they're about to fuck fight right yeah. on the yeah right on the, yeah. the, the just the like holodeck. ninja three <laughs> when she pours that tomato juice bridge, all over herself. Oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tra- yeah. Holodeck, uh, create oh. tomato juice. Yeah. <laughs> Pour it on me. <laughs> and um, and so you have them and they're, they're flirting. She's smiling. Even the music's really flirty and she's like, like looking at him, giving him like yeah. this look. And he's very nervous, dude. He's like, oh, yeah. I've never been with a with a human woman i could kill you well, but the part of the flirtation starts with the fact that he's, he's like you know you're you're heavily favored to win the ship's pool and she's like oh you did you place a bet on me and he's like well well yeah you're a sure thing yes. yeah you're, you're like, gonna win yeah you're gonna beat the <laughs> shit out of everybody and it's gonna be really hot <laughs> Especially with a tomato juice. Um, anyway, <laughs> watch Ninja Three. You'll get the tomato juice. Reference. Um, Ninja Three: The Domination. Uh, oh, that so, movie is amazing. So uh, they get a, they get like a distress call, and they're supposed to pick up. Um, uh, what's this lady called? Deanna Troy. Deanna, Deanna Troy. Troy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this fucking uh, lady call. <laughs> Deanna Troy. And so they're gonna pick up Deanna Troy, and I don't know where the fuck she's at or why the fuck she's not there. Uh, they kind of, <laughs> what did they say? Like she's, she's on some business. She left, like, she left on a conference. This happens very often. They left on a conference. Yeah. And, and I don't know what back. that means. Like, like, <laughs> yeah. Why can't we have fucking, we have FaceTime. Let's do it from here. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Why would no, yeah. they? <laughs> they? They also have holodecks. They can't, they haven't figured out the technology to be like, hey, how about we combine this FaceTime technology and the holodeck and make it seem like they're next to us. And we, you know what I mean? Like, that's perfect oh yeah, that's actually why don't like, they do that that's such a good idea why won't they do that like remember like in um in winter soldier those people yeah. like they're, they're like holograms kind of yeah 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 why not do that yeah i don't what know the fuck they're stupid dude uh <laughs> they, and everything too much like star wars <laughs> i guess so i guess so and so they get this they get this uh this, this distress signal and it's only audio no video mm. and apparently um this ship that's carrying uh lieutenant no it's not lieutenant uh deanna troy uh counselor, counselor deanna troy mm-hmm. uh is going it, they're like they don't know where they're at they're lost and like something's going on something fishy's going on and i'm thinking man none of this technology fucking works it's always going <laughs> it's always fucking up yeah and they they're like oh we don't know and then uh jordy's like hey careful you're getting you're getting too close to that planet and they're like, where are we? And <laughs> and then like they call out where they are, like, oh, you're at this vector. And they're like, oh man. And then, <laughs> and the, then but the thing is, the, the shuttlecraft have windows. They could just look yeah, out the window. I know, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. And then you have this weird like <laughs> subplot that's not really a plot where they're like they have crystals, they, so they can't go full warp drive because yeah. they don't have these bullshit fucking crystals those are the dilithium crystals yeah. which power all the warp drives that's how they work where do you get where do they get these crystals so dilithium crystals are like really rare they only exist on like certain planets like i think like the first dilithium crystals are found on like a moon of jupiter or something hmm. and hmm. basically they allow a matter antimatter reaction that creates the warp drive effect hmm. um that's basically it they're basically batteries. also if you don't want to take um if you don't want to vaccinate your kid, you just rub a crystal all over them. <laughs> Son, I'm going to cause yeah. a matter anti-matter reaction yeah. Yeah. inside you, yeah. and that'll cure you. And that'll kill you. That, that'll cure you or kill you. We don't know. Later in this episode, I got so mad when I heard someone say something about matter anti-matter. I hope everyone else caught it. <laughs> what, what? 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 Everyone should have gotten really mad because. Uh, someone says set matter antimatter injectors to a twenty five to one ratio. What? The fuck? Now Is remember that... how in that one episode, yeah, where, it needs to be one to one. Been... It has to yeah. be one to one. That was like the trick question. Oh that, no! That only he... has a single answer. Oh no! That guy, that fucking Leland Lynch guy, fucked everyone. <laughs> like how the fuck twenty five to one when it's supposed to be one? To... You're gonna kill everybody. Oh, maybe he did it because he remember he said we're we're having minor warp. So maybe it's because he only wants a minor warp reaction and the 25 is matter um, and the yeah. one is anti. Because if you put too much more antimatter than matter, it'll just destroy everything. Then what's the point of saying in a previous episode that there is only one ratio? 
maybe it's because they're like they they didn't quite completely fix it. So yeah. they're like, oh, we got running this is this warp drive is booted in safe mode, and mm. safe mode is twenty five to one. Maybe that's what it is. This is the most begrudging acceptance <laughs> I've ever made <laughs> regarding bullshit duct tape patching over lore. Yeah, and, and stupid star sh- Star Trek science that's bullshit <laughs> i'm just saying like you set a rule up and then you fucking <laughs> like what the hell is wrong with you i'm sorry he, he he did tell picard afterward he was like we can't go fast we we're at minimum warp that's all yeah. we can do so maybe that's why no. he, well, wait, so minimum warp but like that that's still better than impulse power yeah it's warp one it's a speed of light that's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I forgot. <laughs> Warp one speed of light. That's yeah, stupid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they, they bring these bullshit crystals on this little tray. And yeah, they ask they ask, <laughs> Lynch, they ask Lynch, like, hey, it looks like it's is- an escalator. I know. Yeah. And like, the thing long- is, like, these are supposed to be, I think they're incredibly dangerous. So the <laughs> fact that it's just like two dudes carrying it on like a lunch tray. It's just yeah. a salt lamp. It's <laughs> yeah. a pink Himalayan yeah, yeah. salt lamp. It's a yeah. Korean Himalayan salt lamp that you see in every Korean uh, supermarket yep. uh, out by the rice. <laughs> and so, the yeah. bamboo shoots. Yeah. Um, and they, they're like, Lynch, how long is this going to fucking take? And then he's like, I don't know, 20 minutes or more. I don't know. And he, it's like, motherfucker, like, do you even know what you're doing, you piece of shit? <laughs> and uh, he's like, all right, I'll do it in three. I'll just set it by hand. I know. He's just that's like, like, that's going to take a while. He's like, no, don't do, make it faster. He's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. So he, he does a bullshit fucking fix job on this thing. And he, <laughs> he does it by hand. Uh, it, it's real bullshit what, what he's doing. Like, he puts his tray on this thing and it looks really hokey, dude. It doesn't look like <laughs> it just doesn't look right. Um, and and you think like, oh, by the way, the that guy Lynch looks like one of my uh, someone I know. And uh-huh. I was like, oh man, that looks like a that looks like Vito. And uh, <laughs> I, I had I had to look up the credits. I'm like, no, but Vito Vito's not that old. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, so they're trying to figure out where this thing crashed because this thing they can't get a hold of the signal anymore and mm-hmm. they're like oh I th- they think they it went down on the planet that it was close to so they're trying to get a, a a sign of life and they can't there's no signs of life but there's debris so they're like all right we gotta k- catch it or let's let's be let's be there guys let's not be yeah. here let's be there we need to find out what fucking happened to to diana troy because she's the only one that could feel feelings we, we can't <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> can't that's why feeling. yeah <laughs> the only one yeah so so since since it was a crash they send out beverly crusher uh uh-huh. lieutenant yar uh Riker, and data of course mm. it's the usual suspects man yeah and you know what uh, this is where i start getting upset um <laughs> and so they see the they see the ship and there's a bunch of rocks and then they're like oh there's this puddle of goo here all right, well, I'll just go around it. And then the puddle of goo moves, and you're like, oh, my God, it's fucking Venom, dude. It's it's the... Uh, yeah, it's literally. It moves, yeah. And then they're like, hey, there seems to be this puddle of goo we can't get across. And then Beverly Crusher's like, well, let's just find a shallow place and jump it. And, like, and they're like, shut up. <laughs> shut up, Beverly fucking deadbeat mom. Um and then they starts moving, and they can't they can't figure out what it is. Like, Dita's like, I don't know what the fuck this is. Some sort of fucking black goo um and he's like no intelligent like life found in in this goo mm-hmm. and he can't get in sufficient information and then and then the goo starts to like take shape mm. <laughs> and it's straight up fucking venom yeah. it's like a rudimentary but you know what for it being what year was this again 1988 dude the the this effect is pretty cool and like the fact that like eventually like Riker goes in there and they do a good job yeah, yeah the, uh, and like given what they have with the budget they're they're yeah. doing a, a bang up job in making you believe this is a, a weird goo thing that's that's forming shape and shape. so part of me thought it was motor oil and I think some of the angles are it's motor oil just because of the viscosity of it mm-hmm. but then in some angles it looks like it's like chocolate fudge yeah it, yeah it had to be chocolate fudge when he was on his body because oh yeah you'd be like poisoned yeah. <laughs> Otherwise. yeah so um so this thing takes shape and it starts talking to them and he's like uh and it starts really fucking with them like hey they're like hey we need to get to, to our injured people and he's like yeah you may not pass you may not pass go um <laughs> and he's like you haven't given me a good reason and 
they really quickly realize that this is a bitch ass fucking venom thing, dude. He's really pissed. He just kind of just fucking with them, and he doesn't give a shit about life or anything. And he's, he's just a huge dick. Yeah. 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 By the way, uh, the the liquid it was made of is is Metamucil and printer's ink. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I guess that's how they made it like like safe. Riker it was also it. pretty cool of them to utilize like a reverse f- uh, playback footage effect for the the guy coming out of the 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 goop. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a, there's a lot of fun camera trickery they're doing, uh, yeah. and the the only bad parts are the the, the CG when they're trying to move it. Yeah, like yeah. that doesn't look great, but eh, yeah, they're doing their best. And so um, they're like, "Hey, why don't you let us go?" And he's like, "Ah, eh, because I don't want to. I don't want to help you guys." And he's like, "Hey, we just look." We value we value all life. We're just trying to get to our people. We value you. We don't want to. We don't want to do. We don't want to hurt you, fucker. We just <laughs> want to. You do you. We do you. We do us. And just everybody goes their way. And uh, Lieutenant Yar is like, well, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go get our people. And he fucking launches her. He does like a space fucking chop, and <laughs> he he launch, he launches her like across the fucking way. But you don't really know what happens. Like it's like an uh, energy blast or something. Yeah, because mm-hmm. like. If he had just punched her, I guess it, I guess it would kill her. I guess that <laughs> a punch to the head that that hard would have killed her. But so they they try to attack it with lasers, and it like sucks up the energy, and it only like it feels like it makes it stronger. Mm-hmm. And so they go and they're trying to get a reading on on Lieutenant Yara, but fucking Beverly is like, dude, she's fucking dead, dude. Yeah, she ain't come back uh, unless a crow lands on her grave and then she'll come <laughs> back and avenge us all. <laughs> 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 oh no! But then, even then, he died because yeah, yeah. it was in real life from the. Oh. <laughs> um. So, so uh, this is where I get really pissed because because I'm like they can't kill her like this. No, there's no way <laughs> she goes out like this like a chump. Well, the thing is, like, she was a warrior. She should have died a warrior's death, like fighting it, mm-hmm. and she died a very lame way. And that's what that's the biggest problem with this thing for me is that like gotcha she what if what if like look i don't know why they killed her off i Did don't know explain? why they killed her. D- uh, explain but then i'll explain why it was wrong <laughs> <laughs> uh denise crosby didn't want to be in the show anymore well she's uh, wrong she's wrong <laughs> she, i think in the long run that ended up being a mistake given where the show went but right. initially the reason why they wanted she wanted to leave is that she was frustrated that the show wasn't developing her character very much. Mm-hmm. And that's fair. Um, but to be fair, also, no one's character was being developed really in the first yeah. season because uh, that was a Gene Roddenberry thing. He didn't like character development. So he kind of kept everyone the same. It's only after Roddenberry kind of stepped down halfway through the first season that more character development stuff started coming out, especially by the second season. So I think she like jumped the gun a little bit early. Um, well, I mean, every- Data had like uh, his Data Lore episode. Worf got his Code of Honor, whatever episode. Um, yeah, but 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 they're coming. Wesley like, you got know? you know episode after episode after episode. Yeah, but I, I think Picard, it was of course, coming. Get, gets like every episode. <laughs> but I think I think the thing is that like Tasha, I mean, uh, the, Denise Crosby said that if every episode had been written. This, the way this one was, or if there were more episodes written the way this one was for her, she would have not wanted to leave. Mm-hmm. But it just happened to be the one where she leaves. They like wrote her some of her best lines. So I don't know. I, I why- do want to take a quick moment to criticize the makeup job of, of the of the blood spot on her cheek. It's really bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's probably the worst makeup job I've seen. I don't to know date what that's this, supposed to be. Is that is that supposed to be blood, or is it supposed to? Be- I mean, the Cut- color is pretty blood. Like blood red, but I mean, like, what the hell else could it be? Because, like, originally in the script, there were supposed to be like the the, the guy was the, the evil goo venom was originally called Armus. the shroud. Yeah, Armus was originally called the shroud, and whenever it affected someone, it would leave marks of the shroud all over it temporarily. So I wonder if that was supposed to be the effect of the shroud, but I don't know. But it, then it that's just, one spot. It's yeah, I don't like. Know. Yeah, like it, I, I don't buy a story of like, well, that's the last piece of the original idea left over. <laughs> that makes no Let's sense. just do it on her. Yeah, and just one, just one little piece. Let's the give cheek. the makeup artist something to do. Yeah. They're really excited for the shroud stuff. Yeah, they made this cutout and everything to spray paint this on. <laughs> it's funny how they originally called it the shroud, but then in, eventually they, um, they went with skin of evil. I mean, that sounds way more evil. 
So I think that <laughs> I think I think skin of evil ended up being a cool cool term for it. But anyway, please, Ricardo, continue. I'm sorry. Yeah. So she just decided in a fucking bitch ass way, dude. Like, the, uh, so the, uh, I don't know why he couldn't like make. What if Venom made more of him? Like he multiplied himself, and then he she had to fight them, and then she was overpowered by like ten of them. Like that would have been interesting, and like mm. it would have been had the same effect, and it would have showed how like strong she was. And but you have all this you you like set this up in the beginning where like yeah she's going to beat all these things she's going to beat all these people in this this tournament mm-hmm. but then she goes out with a little space fucking hit a little fucking space energy i think i think the idea was supposed to be that it shows how overwhelmingly this is like the most evil most powerful thing the crew has ever faced basically right like like they at the at the very least n- they've never faced anything this literally evil before like, mm-hmm. and I think the idea was supposed to be that it's just really shocking how quickly it could take. Because this script existed before Tasha wanted to leave. Denise Crosby wanted to leave. And I think if she hadn't wanted to leave, it probably would have just been like a major injury or something. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, But they didn't rewrite it, I think, to make it seem like <clears throat> like a blaze of glory sort of thing. Hmm. I'm personally OK with it <clears throat> because like to me, it. Like in realistic scenarios, when people die in the line of duty, it's usually not a blaze of glory. It's usually something unfortunate or like really quick and mm-hmm. shitty. So like to me, it, it rang true. Like and and I think like from a narrative perspective, it's like shocking. It's like uh, I don't know. I don't know if I like bringing his name up, but it's like, you know, how like Joss Whedon's shows used to like have a like a really sudden death. Yeah, right, and like, then you find out he was just fucking tormenting people <laughs> in the fucking <laughs> in real life. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I shouldn't have brought him up. I'm sorry, everyone. Uh, <laughs> but, but it's like it's like you know, like like Buffy the Vampire Slayer or Angel had like these deaths that were sudden, but they made like narrative sense. You know, mm-hmm. I, I feel like given the fact that a crew member, a cast cast of the show, wants to leave now, and they're trying to figure out what to do. This is a dramatic way to do it. They could have just said, and Tasha just left, you know, the ship to go. I would have accepted assignment. that more than, than this <laughs> bullshit death. Actually, oh. my issue with the with this scenario is that Tasha is the only one who dies. Yeah. Mm. Um, like he just chooses to to waste her so like nonchalantly in that one moment. Well, they but explain he nev- why. Here's here's how she they, should they die. Try to, but I don't know. Like his his petulance is so arbitrary and oh gosh what's the word i'm looking for like his his whims are so like all over the place well it, it didn't seem arbitrary to me to me it felt a lot like someone who was like trying out different things to stimulate themselves and a direct kill didn't do it so maybe torture will do it maybe talking will do it like it doesn't know how to deal with itself so it was just trying different things out and it it also probably realized that killing someone makes it no longer a toy for it so it wants to like figure out other things to do with them before doing anything else well considering how full of rage it seemed i was just surprised that it was able to you know resist killing things in a fit of rage even though it ultimately leaves it empty like it's just something that would happen i would i feel personally yeah yeah, like that's, that's lashing fair. out that's as fair. they as they taunt him and that sort of thing and that's fair that's fair the fact like, that it's, it's it seems really emotional and Seems yeah, like and, and the fact that he was able to kill so so easily like makes it seem as though if he were to lose control in any in any capacity, everyone should die. Yeah, it, this guy also reminds me of Melvar from Futurama. Oh yeah, Melvar is probably an amal- amalgamation of a lot of these types of characters. Yeah, like he, he totally <laughs> feels like a Melvar. The way he, he's he, like, he, well, he, kill, I, he kills Welshy and then explodes Welshy. So. Yeah, but I was exp- <laughs> yeah, I was I was. <laughs> like exactly like as he's yelling he should be like like zapping the the charred body of tasha yar even more well she <laughs> it's like i was getting to that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah melvar is definitely a version of armas for sure can can i pitch you guys how i would have killed her off yeah please please wesley crusher <laughs> he's grown up he's played by i don't know <laughs> Let's say an older actor. 
You know, okay. it's just some older actor. Yeah, the actor yeah. who played him when he he grew up to an adult in in that one episode where Riker got powers. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, actually, um, no, a different actor, uh, oh. even older actor. Right? Oh, like he's like much older. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, his character should be should be. <laughs> it's Richard Dreyfus, right? <laughs> okay, it's Richard Dreyfus, and he's writing his memoir. And okay. and he's like he types in he's, his kids are like hey dad let's go and he's like one minute and he types in the last paragraph he's like and then Lieutenant Yar walked into a diner and she's and a fight <laughs> broke out she's tried to stop it and she was stabbed she <laughs> that's how it should end it just like Stand by Me <laughs> <laughs> okay so that's the reference I wasn't picking up on it <laughs> Will, Wheat- Will Wheaton is in that. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's true. And Richard Dreyfus oh. plays him. Yeah. <laughs> I would. Well, that said. sounds that like a, a market improvement. That, that was a long setup. That was, was a long was, setup. For was, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I just would have had her die in a fight or something. You know. I think. I think that's the, you could narratively do it that way, and it would like you know give her a big moment. But I think it still m- makes sense. To me. I, this is how she should have died. This this episode should have turned into like uh, Lieutenant Yara enters the Kumite, you know, and then she dies oh. in the Kumite, and Van Dam avenges her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then Van Dam Data, Data, the Data avenges her. Oh yes, yes. Oh yes, man, because yes, Data yeah. would destroy the competition, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, <laughs> so then they bring back the the away team, and Lieutenant Yara is dead, dude. They try to put a bunch of gizmos on her, and then. <laughs> When they appear in the in the uh, the transport room, they should have just sent fucking Statham down there. Just <laughs> kick the sh- he already knows how to fight motor oil, like yeah. basically fighting motor oil. <laughs> he's like, he's like, you are you are my element. Yeah, uh, fuck <laughs> you, mate. Poof. Um, how so dare you, yeah. He just takes off his shirt and just goes in there, fucking shirtless, yeah. dude. Yeah. Uh, but so they appear on the transporter, and then Beverly Crusher grabs her and he just pushes her. <laughs> towards data and her like her like limp body kind of just like <laughs> it's really weird it's really yeah. why would you why wouldn't you transport a yeah. dead body into the medical bay directly instead yeah. of yeah. doing this it seems yeah. you can transport the transport room lets you transport anyone to anywhere in the ship so why oh really it's, yeah, it yeah. Is, it's only to the bay out of um like formality and because it's just easier it might be, be it might be okay here, here's my explanation the transport room is the only place where you can be assured that there's a clear path for your transport i think that that's probably one a big part like of it's the, the only yeah, monitored yeah. space where there's guaranteed to be nothing in your way when you get yeah transported yeah in. that's a, that's definitely one part of it for sure for sure yes okay so they fucked up. They should have just had her, you know, they should have just had Statham go down there. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so they, they get her to the, to the medical bay and, and they're like, yeah, she's dead, dude. We can't, we can't bring her back. Dad is dead. It's really dramatic. Like yeah. they, they build it up as if they, they might bring her back. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and they, they're just burning time because they, they didn't, couldn't write anything else. <laughs> and so, so they, we go back to the, to the wreckage and um, Deanna Troy's there and she's, and she's like, she's a hurt, but you can't really tell what her injury is. Cause she like, mm-hmm. she's holding body parts at one point, but then like, like the next scene, she's fine. She's just like, yeah, it's fine. No, yeah. Um, it's just, yeah. Me. They forgot to have the continuity from scene <laughs> yeah. to scene. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> the, the uh, Venom goes and, and like goes and talks to her and like, she's like, Hey, I know that you were left here, that you have all this rage and like, you know, like it's, it's fine. Like they, they you were just abandoned. You're just like an, an abandoned person yeah. who feels all this loneliness and it's turned into rage. And she, you know, she's trying to, she feels pity for him and, and he's like, oh, I, I, Fuck your pity. I pity uh, the fool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He really yeah. doesn't know how to deal with it. No, no, no. You're acting so re- poorly. Yeah. It's such a, it's such a meta, it's like a philosophical concept almost, the skin yeah. of evil. It's like, um, you know what it is? It's, it's, it's twins. <laughs> it's the movie Twins. <laughs> it's the Danny skin DeVito. of evil is Danny DeVito. <laughs> Venom is Danny DeVito. And this episode, mark my words, inspired Twins because Twins released later this this year in December. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So so the away team is like, you know what's a good idea? That Venom thing killed one of our 
people already. Let's let's go down there again. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a little. And so they head down there, and now it's like it's Riker. They brought everybody back, and oh, and they've made um a wharf. He's now in charge of security. Yeah, right. And he does a smart move, which is like they're like, "Hey, Worf, are you are you coming with us?" And he's like, "Nah, I'm staying." And I think if they if they would have brought him down, he would have just started trying to punch the fucking venom. Yeah, he would have. The rage would have taken over. Yeah. The Klingon oh, rage would have engulfed him. He would have done one of those yells. Oh, yeah. um, and try to stab the goo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a little. It was. A, it seemed to be a nice little character moment for Worf because as soon as he was charged with that duty, he did his best to fill it right away. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. So it's like, you know, even though he would love to go down there and beat the shit out of something, he realized like, wait a minute, I have yeah. a new duty now. I better yeah. stay on tactical comms duty. Yeah. Um, so this time they send Jordy and it's like, yeah, Jordy, but we get spared. Jordy. <laughs> we get spared Jordy, though. Yeah, we get spared Jordy. <laughs> and so, so they send him down there and, and Venom is like, no one's coming for you, fucking uh, Deanna Troy. And they're like, yeah, soon they'll be here. Don't worry, dude. They're, they haven't forgotten about you. So they come back and then the, the Venom thing's like trying to attack them. And then um, you go back to 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 uh, Worf and stupid ass fucking... Wesley. Wesley. It's the first time he shows, shows up. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Why, why are you trusting the kid? The, one person's dead already. You, Someone's but, dead. With, it's their that, shit got hand. serious. Let's yeah. get him out of here. Yeah. <laughs> get him out of here and get him to shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> Go tell him to write his memoir. Stop with humoring him. Richard Dreyfus. <laughs> um, and so he, Venom comes out and he's talking to them. He's like, hey, I already killed her. I'm not, I'm not entertained. Uh, and, and, and so, they're, they're just trying to talk to Deanna Troy and, and Jordy's doing this weird thing where he's like, he's like getting, uh, getting lower and he's trying to look at it. Like trying he's to trying check to it use, out. Yeah. His yeah. predator vision. Yeah, he's using but, his music television. Yeah. <laughs> and he can't, he, and he's like, he's like shifting around. He, and he looks at data, but like, it really doesn't go anywhere. Cause I thought like, Oh, he's going to figure it out. Cause like, uh, some sort of spectral thing, and like if the light hits him at a certain angle, like I thought nah, this guy's yeah. gonna figure it yeah, out. That's no, true. There is no, no payoff, even though they yeah. keep showing you him, yeah. like watching yeah. intently. Yeah, it's a waste it's of time. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> yeah. And so they they figure out uh, old Wharf and and Wesley figure out that when it's like. <laughs> It's the same thing like the it clown in it part two, which is oh, yeah, if you yeah. just insult it, if you just don't, don't be afraid of it, just insult it. It, it gets weak. Yeah. So you yeah. just be like, you're a it's bitch ass fool. Oh yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I am. I, oh, oh, I am a bitch ass fool. Oh. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a bitch so, ass venom. Oh. First, first of all, he fucks with him. He takes off Jordy's visor and he's like, don't That's help him. That's the only reason Jordy's <laughs> yeah. in the scene. Yeah, it's just to have a, a knock off your glasses yeah. moment. And then he's like the nerd yeah. that the bully makes fun of. That's Pick basically. Him up. Pick him up, you fool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's it's, it's stuff like that that made me think like this villain's like Arbus is silly. He's a silly man. He's a silly villain. He's yeah. a like, silly boy. <laughs> he's evil, but like it, it's it's so it's such petty like small potatoes bullshit he's doing. He's a, he's a petty bitch. Aside from the murder he just did. Yeah. But that's a petty murder too. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't yeah, even yeah. like a cool murder. It wasn't even a cool murder. Yeah. So so while they're while they're talking to to Venom, old uh, Deanna Troy, she's talking to to the crew. Like they're able to. So when Venom's like concentrating on one person, like he could shield even the communication. So they can't they can't teleport her out of there. Like it's this Venom thing could really fuck with the with the old gadgets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those rules are barely defined though. Yeah. Yeah. And and so she's laying there and she's like talking to the crew and she's like, Yeah, this dude's lonely and he's like he's just <laughs> fucking bitch. Uh, and so uh, he goes and talks to Venom again. She talks to Venom. She's like, ah, they're here, but I think I'm going to kill one of them. She's like, no, uh, they're my friends. And, and he's like, yeah, maybe I'm going to fuck with him. I'm going to, I'm, uh, maybe I'll kill him, maybe I torture him. I don't know. And then she, and Venom goes back and, and he's, Venom sucks up fucking Riker, dude. And it's a cool effect. Like yeah. the, the way yeah. he like, he like, it makes it seem like he tripped them. First of all, and then it sucks them into the goo. It's it, this. I was very impressed by like yeah. the effects of the, of the time, and, and it's even got this this move that Sam Raimi does, which is the the fingers on like this 
well, he does it in like Evil Dead, mm-hmm. where like someone gets pulled away and they leave like this trail of like their their nail marks on yeah, the yeah, board. Yeah, 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 for and sure. And the same thing happens, but in the sand, it's very, it's very, it's it's a very interesting shot. It's like a horror the, movie shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The That's other the thing, thing. This episode's kind of a horror episode. Yeah, like not it's, horrors, not horrors, <laughs> horror. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a horror. A horror I, like, like, to, like, to, to me, every horror movie. Whores. To me, almost every movie is almost sci-fi. So to me, like, it's not that big of a leap for it to just go into the realm of horror like this. And I think it's an interesting uh, take on it because the most evil thing they come across is basically a horror villain. I think it's it's cool. I can't think of the word whores without thinking of Frank from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> Just saying, <laughs> banging whores. Um, so, so then um, he gets pulled in. You know what upset me too about this episode? So many goddamn shots out of focus. So many shots out, it's, of, uh, out of focus. It's out of focus and also shot with the wrong exposure. There's a ton of shots where you, because they shot on film. And there's a ton of shots where you can tell where they had to push the... F- so just to explain for the audience, when you push film, it basically you leave it in the chemical reaction a little longer so that it exposes more, more than it's intended to. And when that happens, it's fine. You see more of the image, but it becomes really grainy. Mm-hmm. So you see a lot of shots where it's like incredibly grainy. And I'm pretty sure it's because they shot it at the wrong exposure and they were like, fuck, we can't see it. We have to push the film a bit. Now... That's what you get. Like a lot of the close up shots of Picard on the planet is really grainy. Yeah. And, and I'm pretty sure it's because they 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 were shooting fast and loose and they messed up yeah. the, the way they were doing it. God damn it. The cameraman is fucking. <laughs> but yeah, yeah a lot of shots are out of focus extras. too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's a really cool horror shot of him getting sucked up. And, and then he's like, fucking data, help me, you fool. Don't just look <laughs> at me. And and then Venom's like, if you help him, I'm going to kill him. And so he just lets him get sucked in, and Data's <laughs> like, "Oh fuck!" And it's a really cool effect of him getting yeah. sucked in. Um, and John the Frakes looks like really scared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they cap it all off with that like face, like kind yeah, of yeah, it's know, a great effect coming yeah. out of the yeah, yeah. It looks kind of like the T one thousand, but black. Yeah, it was a great effect. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> There's a scene. Um, so he gets sucked in, right? Mm-hmm. And then it's a shot from behind. Right. And mm-hmm. none of them are holding phasers. You could see that nobody's holding phasers, but then like they run t- right to like what I would call the shore, the shoreline of Venom. Uh-huh. And then a, 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 fa- a phaser, is it a taser or phase? Whatever it's fucking called. It falls in the <laughs> goo. And I think it fell off the halter of somebody and it landed in the goo, but they yeah, just left yeah. a shot in there. They're like, oh, yeah. fuck it. It fell in. Fuck it. Uh, and yeah, we, we can't do that effect again. The, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it fell off. Okay. I just rewatched it. It fell off of Jordy's holster. <laughs> Yeah, I oh, think really? right up to yeah. 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 That's, that's actually really funny. I I never noticed it being that much of a blunder because they're like, we can't do that again. Yeah, yeah, we can't we, afford we, it. We, we can't get Riker, Jonathan yeah. Frakes, all clean again. Do that shot. Well, you we only had tell, one shot. You could tell it was a double because yeah. it's it's a wig. You could tell it's yeah, a wig. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're like, you know how much these wigs are? We can only afford one. Yeah. Um. So so th- he gets sucked in. They're like, hey, I think, uh, hey, hey, Captain, I think this guy's dead, man. And they're like, oh, fuck, dude. Uh, and then they, it's a really cool, there's a really cool effect where like the face pops up. Yeah. And yeah, the, yeah. the mouth is open. Yeah. That is really cool. That is really yeah. cool. Uh, it's, a, it's a real like horror like shot. And I love mm-hmm. it. Real hooer shot. Hooer <laughs> shot. <laughs> hooer <laughs> shot. <laughs> and so they're like, hey, look at this. Here is when like the thing's doing bad things. And, 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 and here's when like it's being insulted. <laughs> <laughs> We could basically beam him up. While this is when he him. was angry. Yeah. This is when he was being insulted. Yeah. And then he was sad. Yeah. And then you see the energy go up and down. <laughs> yeah. So then Venom like goes and like t- talks to DeAndre. He's like, yeah, see, I, I like, I sucked him up into my goo. And she's like, no, <laughs> he's a good man. And, and, he's, and he's like, yeah. I don't give a fuck. Uh, and then uh, Luke Picard beams down there and he's like, ah, fuck it. I'm going to go fucking. If I can't send my transporter, my number one fight guy, because he's the best <laughs> transporter yet slash best fighter. So I could only use him for one. Like I either have to use him <laughs> when I trans when I beam these people up back into the enterprise, or I can go have him fight this thing, but not both. He's not the multitasker. He's yeah, the no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's like, Statham, you stay up here. When when I insult him enough, you beam them up. <laughs> Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and what I said earlier. By like, they barely it. define this rule. It's like, yeah, well, yeah. let's just 
Let's just. I'm gonna like, make him feel really bad, yeah. and then I'm gonna start talking about his mom. <laughs> uh, get really <laughs> upset. Yeah. So basically, he tells he like he's like, hey, uh, first of all, the this this venom thing starts. Uh, not only does it control its its uh, Tom Hardy, but it controls other people. Uh, mm-hmm. It gets it gets uh, data to aim the the phaser at like Luke Picard, and then back at the doctor. And uh, Data makes a good point because he's like he's like uh, Venom's like. And that shot of Data, the close-up, is way out of focus. So yeah, it's focus. not great. It's yeah. really bad. He's like, how, how would you feel if like you killed the doctor? Ugh, how would you feel? And then Data's like, well, technically, you would be doing it because you're controlling me, you fucking idiot. Yeah. Uh, and so they get away with that technicality. And and finally, Picard's like, beam them up. Get them the fuck out of here. I'll well, before that, like, because Data starts like discussing like Armis's bullshit. And I, I thought it was a really interesting line because it feels like it's sort of data being angry, which is interesting. So I just wanted to play that back really quick here. Tell me, Tin Man, how does it feel to face your own extinction? Curious. You are capable of great sadism and cruelty. Interesting. No redeeming qualities. So, what do you think? I think you should be destroyed. A moral judgment from a machine. Yeah, it's not. It's a line you wouldn't expect from Data, where yeah. Data's like, "Let's fucking kill you, <laughs> like, yeah, and see what happens." Yeah, it, that might be the start of like. I mean, it, it, I think they might hint at this a little more later in the show, but Data does seem like pretty affected by the loss of Yar. No, yeah. he he well, legitimately like cares well, for Yar. Yeah, I mean he fucked her. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he caught feelings. He caught the worst STD. Yeah, feelings. so they. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what I meant to say is like, yeah, they actually remember that 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 happened. Yeah, even if and, Tasha doesn't. That's true. Oh. Yeah, dude. <laughs> but all, all the whole episode, I wanted him to just go. What the hell are you? I am Venom. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I wanted. Uh, uh, we are Venom uh, when Riker's in there. And so <laughs> all Riker becomes yeah. the host. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, he, yeah. he gets spit out like covered in black goop right there. Yeah. Like it just yeah. needs to form into a bunch of muscles around him and give him a white <laughs> spider and yeah. there you go. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, so it spits out Riker and he's all full of chocolate, dude. And, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, hey, beam him up there. I'm going to stay Poor here. Poor Jonathan Frakes. Yeah. He's covered in this yeah. shit. <laughs> and he starts like he he's like hey if you want me to inter-, you know because he's like entertain me and he's like no nah, I will do no such thing you bitch ass fool uh, take me to Yar and I want to see that that she's okay and finally he like he brokers a deal and she's he's like all right and so he beams uh he actually Venom beam beams up. I don't know why. It seems like they're so close. Why don't he just let him walk through? It doesn't make any I don't sense. Know. It's just cool. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he just he, more demonstrations of I his know. power. I know. It, and he, he he's just showing off now. Yeah, 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 basically. But the funny thing is he he can transport her, him in, but doesn't overhear his conversation of saying, yeah, So I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna yeah. fucking make him nope. angry. I'm gonna give you your privacy. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna beam you in there, but I'm gonna give you your privacy. <laughs> he's very considerate he's yeah. <laughs> about the conversation. Like, and uh it's that sort of stuff that keeps on making me think of Melvar. It's like <laughs> it, it's incompetent. Yeah, well, you know? I don't th- well it I I'm okay with the idea of this stupid black goo being incompetent. I think that's fine. I just think it's it's there's no demonstration of incompetence before that, so it's the only point that happens. So I, I think that 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 makes it a little like out of place, where it's like, well, wait, he, shouldn't he be like? What he the also kind of flounders on? about because like it's clear that he doesn't really know exactly how to get what he wants. But yeah, you know, it's like we just discussed that data scene where it's like, well, haha, what? How's it feel to do this? And he's like, uh, no, no, it's not actually what's happening. You're you're going to be the one who murders everyone. And he's like, uh, 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 well, uh, how about this? Uh-huh. Shoot yourself in the head. How does that feel? Yeah, it's, like, it's oh, so no. like, it, 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 it reeks of incompetence to me. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah. Well, to yeah. me, that, then that makes sense to me where he's just like, ah, I'm kind of shitty. Uh, not, no like, war. <laughs> I was getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so like, basically Deanna Troy is like, hey, 
if you insult his mom and you insult him, <laughs> he's, it's just like the it clown. If you insult it, it's just, just gonna cower. And you have to do yeah. your mama jokes relentlessly yeah, yeah. <laughs> over and over again until yeah. he can't even remember where his mom begins and then mom ends. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Use that. <laughs> 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 he, he goes out there and and he sits down on a rock and he's like, uh, he he recites this poem. He speeches and, it to death, which is kind of amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, he's basically like, I don't serve evil, you piece of shit. And he just starts fucking tearing him down, but like not in like a like a yelling sort of way, like I would do, like like fuck you, you <laughs> fucking gooey piece of shit. No, mm-hmm. he's like very calm and he's like, no, you gooey piece of shit <laughs> and like it's very like shakespearean you know like the way he tears yeah. him down and it's well, and he's very yeah, yeah he's very um out of focus while he does it um <laughs> <laughs> and and very grainy like yeah, he's yeah, so yeah. grainy in these shots <laughs> and and then and then Worf is like hey beams him up and and then i'm like god damn it, why are you trusting this kid dude this goddamn terrorist just take um, over the console yeah don't let him do it yeah god damn it and so uh he just starts tearing him down and 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 venom's like oh we are venom <laughs> and it, starts it wants yelling. to leave the planet that's why yeah. it's talking to picard in the first place because yeah. it, it it even though it's really powerful it has no ability to leave i guess yeah so it's trying to co- convince yeah. picard it's really like it's uh, it's 100 percent venom dude it's a hundred percent venom yeah yeah uh yeah. i i it's like I, psychic venom venom with yeah. psychic powers basically yeah. well yeah and it's definitely afraid of being alone yeah 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 it's, it's very time. it's very true so while he's insulting him he, they beam up De- uh, deanna troy and old ben who's in the fucking who's the pilot who's probably dead uh, he, yeah, he's, he's not responsive up. he's really yeah. fucked up yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, and then finally, like he insults him one last time, and he's like, Ugh. "I'm and not like, taking you aboard." Yeah, I'm not taking you. I'm going to leave you <laughs> here. You fool. whatever voice actor is playing Venom, it's great because oh. he's just going like, "No <laughs> 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 more." <laughs> and so he 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 beams up to the ship, and then they just fucking blow up. They they like blow up the 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 remains of the of the crash vessel because they don't want yeah. him to get out. I thought okay, I thought that when they get back to the ship, they'd be like, "All right, fire all photon torpedoes." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blow yeah. Up this planet. Let's blow up this planet. <laughs> nuke this bitch. Let's yeah. get rid of this fucking yeah. thing. <laughs> like, yeah. And then I guess they're. I mean, so they do destroy one thing. They destroy that shuttle. Just yeah. to make sure that he can't yeah. leave the planet. That's all. Just kill kill Melvar too. You might as well just keep nuking but like, him. <laughs> but also, they're they're like they're like oh, and we we we've, we've made this planet like off of like nobody can come to this planet now. It's off limits. But no, but they didn't come on the planet yeah. just to visit yeah. it in the first place. They crash they, landed yeah. on it. So. He made the, he made them crash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it doesn't matter. It, it someone's gonna he's gonna happen again. It's gonna happen. Nuke again. the planet. Throw it yeah. into the sun. Send, send <laughs> now that everyone's safe. Send the transporter in there, dude. <laughs> Shirtless. <laughs> and so uh, they go into the holodeck. Uh, this is the end. The little tag at the end. Mm-hmm. They go to the holodeck, and it's a nice, beautiful day in some sort of green planet. Beautiful mm-hmm. clouds. It's Windows XP. Yeah. This is Windows XP. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And um, everyone's there, and he gives a, a nice speech, uh, and she's like, "Ah, oh, he, she went out uh, in a beautiful way." It's like, "No, she didn't. She fucking venom fucked her, dude." <laughs> uh, and then he 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 goes back, and and then Deanna Troy appears in a hologram, which is how every Natasha dad, appears in the hologram. Sorry, yeah, Natasha <laughs> Natasha appears in the hologram, yeah. and this is how everybody should appear when they're communicating with anybody as a hologram, (laughs) not as a stupid fucking FaceTime thing. (laughs) Two Uh, Star Wars. Yeah. It doesn't matter, dude. They could, (laughs) they could do it better. (laughs) And so she appears as a hologram and she starts like, like she says like, Hey, I don't have a family. I was, you know, I, I, I was just basically, I have that clip because it's like basically the last line she has of the series. So hello, my friends. You are here now watching this image of me because I've died. It probably happened while I was on duty and quickly, which is what I expected. Yeah, I did. Never forget I died doing exactly what I chose to do. What I want you to know is how much I loved my life and those of you who shared it with me. You are my family. 
You all know where I came from and what my life was like before. But Starfleet took that frightened, angry young girl and tempered her. I have been blessed with your friendship and your love. Yeah, so she she then goes on to talk to each of them individually. And I find it so odd that she had a special message ready for Wesley as a kid. Like yeah, before. this implies that she's constantly updating this hologram. Either that or just assumed, <laughs> I'm going to die like know, probably this soon. year. <laughs> every year I have to go back to this hologram. <laughs> it's like a will. That yeah. she, has to, she has to check every year. Will like, patient. <laughs> um and imagine imagine being imagine being there and like like that's she's so going through <laughs> No, I like that one. I like that joke. <laughs> Sorry, some land and some don't. I apologize. No, that landed. It got um, me. <laughs> and so so you you have imagine being there and like you're you're one of the last people she's she's like name dropping and then she's like oh fuck what if she doesn't get to my name what yeah. if she starts saying all these people well Picard only brought the ones she talked about this is these are I the only yeah, people Picard on probably sh- watched the message beforehand yeah. and it's like okay she only talks to these people yeah oh shit she doesn't mention Jordy Jordy don't okay all of that run Windows XP <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jordy, you stay here. Um, and so, so um, it's it's an interesting goodbye. She she didn't mention um, you know the fact that Data loved her because he's he, as far as we know he she's the only humanoid that he's slept with, right? No, he's the only- actually, I I wrote a, a note down for that because it says to my friend Data, whom I only had sex with that one time. You're I mean, like yeah, a child. I know. Oh, I know. oh, oh wait. She yeah. says you're like a child. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. That's a little strange. Yeah. Natasha. I well, was like, she did, she did grow up in a she did grow up on a fucked up planet. Yeah. Why you gotta do data dirty like that? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, um He and was he, fully he, functional, damn it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He said so himself. Uh, but it, it was, I, th- this last part was fine, but I don't like how she died. And I, I don't like that she died, period. I don't like that she, that she wanted to leave. You did, say sorry, early, you did say early on in this podcast series that she was your favorite character. Yes. And, yeah. Uh, For at least well, an episode. Yes. Yeah. And she, she kept being, she kept coming in and out. She was in and out of the will, of the Will Wheaton. Uh, <laughs> And at the end, <laughs> it screwed me over, man. Well, I am sorry to say, um, don't don't read more about it because there's like weird spoilery stuff. But um, okay, she does not come back. Okay, uh, she is the first permanent death in Star Trek history. Oh um, god, because as famously Spock died in um, Wrath of Khan. Yeah, but then spoilers. You know, but then you know, search for Spock. The, the next the title of the next movie. <laughs> what? It's spoil. just a search for Spock. It didn't tell yeah. you if they find him or not. It's not, it's not, it's not called We Found Spock. Yeah. <laughs> and then he just shows up in the fourth. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, that, no, it's, it's sad. Also, remember last episode when she waved at the camera and I yeah. mentioned that? So yeah. That's yeah. because mm-hmm. that was the last shot she ever had in the show. The show was oh. shot out of order. So, the, okay. So uh, the director then. was like, "Hey, this is your this is your martini shot for the whole series. Uh, yeah. Wave goodbye." And that was it. And oh, well, to her sense. credit, she waved a very happy goodbye. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was glad to be leaving. Um, right. So it wasn't the. It was interesting because the cast was very sad to see her leave. Like those tears they're crying were legitimate. Um, uh, Marina Sirtis would often say that like uh, they had become really good friends on set. And mm-hmm. she was like, my best friend's leaving, basically. So it's like, she was very emotional. And because she was crying, everyone else started crying. And then apparently... <laughs> Use it. And then but the thing is, like, they also, like, had to do other scenes. So, like, in between scenes, like, uh, Patrick Stewart was trying to make it a bit happier. So apparently, mm-hmm. when they walked onto the to the, the Windows XP set, he started singing uh, The Hills Are Alive with the Sound of Music <laughs> to kind of nice. get everyone to feel a little better uh, for the scene. But... Yeah, uh, it was, uh, it was, I know you guys don't like it. I actually kind of like the way she went out. It feels Star Trek, like a lot of no. people in <laughs> Star Trek die this way. She just happens to be a high level officer. And I think it's, it feels appropriate to me. I mean, I, you just called her the first permanent death on Star Trek, but there was that one like, um, Indian engineer guy who told oh, of a, of a, of a, of a, of, a, of like a, a, a central character, I should say. 
not there's tons of red shirts and shit that died in the original series tons of times so i, I, I like it just came to mind again because you're just talking about how usually people are dying all the time it's just not tasha yeah yeah that, that's it. like he died very unsettling no, it was about as sudden sure and yeah. it was because of just some electrical discharge from a panel as an ah. accident <laughs> it was an accident literally yeah so i, I, I don't sad <laughs> i think the thing i bemoan slightly about the episode is that it's it's clearly rewritten to have her death built in right so they give data a moment at the end to like you know reminisce because like data clearly you could tell because he's the last person standing and he really cares and yeah. you know and it was remains in the hill but it's also implied throughout the series and especially at the beginning of this episode that Worf had feelings for her too and I wish they had more time to do with something with that in this episode. Um, cause yeah, he, just ed- like- he, he just ends up staying on the ship, which is a tactical choice, but I wish he had more of an emotional moment. Like he, he wasn't allowed to really express how much that meant to him. And I, like I, I part of me thought that like that scene that they had at the beginning where they're talking about the martial arts tournament and stuff felt almost like, well, Tasha only has so much time left and she has shared very little screen time with Worf and like she needs to be like reasonably close to the entire crew in order for this to be affecting. Mm -hmm. So let's give them one tender moment here and let's sprinkle in that twinkly music to make it even more tender. (laughs) And then, you know, when she dies, Worf will have a reason to be sad. Yeah, but I I think, yeah, I I wish I wish they did more with it because it's it was it feels like a missed opportunity of that episode. Yeah, because otherwise honestly, they did have a friendship that was based on like their mutual like uh, love of competition and and things like that. Like yeah, when they were Riker playing that was we, on yeah, yeah that one like one sport thingy. They were playing together. And they were like you know she was like saying t- telling Riker hey he's he's opening up he's coming more friendly and jokey you know right like, right right and it seems like it's Tasha's influence you know because I don't know it's it it, it would have been it also definitely would have been nice if Tasha kept going as a character but think about how useless this episode would be like the the episode is defined honestly the stakes are are raised dramatically from the fact that she died and i think it makes the episode a lot more affecting otherwise it's nothing this episode might as well not even be there it's like there's no real point to it yeah if venom didn't successfully kill anyone he would have been the biggest joke of a villain ever yeah (laughs) yeah it would have been like why this was a waste of time but Mm -hmm. i don't know ricardo what are you gonna rate it because I know you have some strong feelings. What would you want? Well, to like I said, this is both the best episode and the worst episode in mm. one. What do you? What? What about it? I I think I understand what about makes you worse, but what about it makes you best? Uh, yeah. The venom, like I like, I dig. Ve- I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of venom, not this venom, <laughs> but just venom in general. Uh, and this is a good origin story for venom. I mean, <laughs> it literally is Venom. <laughs> it's as close to Venom as to, you can yeah, imagine. To me, yeah, to me, Star someone Trek. saw this and said, I know I'm going to make a comic book like that. <laughs> well, when did Venom debut in comics? Was that an 80s creation Venom? Oh, let me see. Marvel Venom. Let me see what, while you look at that. You come in here again. <laughs> In fact, you can go anywhere in the city preying on innocent people and we will find you and eat both your arms. <laughs> Did you find it? Uh, yeah, he was uh, created in 1984. So 84, it, it, okay. It so predates this episode. So okay. Star Trek stole Venom. Yeah, yeah so the they saw around. the comic book. They read the comic book and they're like, this is a good idea. Let's make yeah. our own Venom. Yeah, yeah. It was probably rewritten that like they're probably going to all get uh, like sent off to the Beyonder dimension to have a, to have a battle. <laughs> And that's what that martial arts tournament was originally. Oh man! Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that arc of the Spider-Man show was fucking hype. I got super <laughs> hype when that happened. Oh man, I was like, "Storms yep. here, it's sick." <laughs> How is she in this show? <laughs> Although the way they introduced Venom in the Spider-Man cartoon was atypical because they didn't want to go through all that like multi-dimension stuff. They just yeah, said, like, yeah. Yeah, hitched a ride on the space shuttle. Yeah, which it became like a, a an origin for a lot of Venom. Yeah, it became stories. a go-to alternate take because it, it neatly did away the it's really the, easy it's the necessity easy. of another yeah. dimension and a. It's from space. <laughs> Don't yeah. worry about it. Um, so what would you rate it, Ricardo, then? Uh, I think I would go seven and a half, eight. Okay. okay. I'll go eight. I'll go eight. I'll be Okay. Be okay. Good. Dan, what would you do then? 
I think this is a seven to me. Okay. Okay. I'll call it a seven. I'm going to be controversial. Um, I ended up really, really liking this episode. The only thing about this episode I wish it had more was more Worf um, talking about Tasha. Uh, so I think it's a nine and a half for me. I really like this episode. Uh, hmm. I think I think her performance at the end was really good. Like that that last scene where they're in the holodeck, like it starts off really corny because they're in such a bright, like blue sky fake room. But yeah. then I think as you see the fact that the cast is legitimately responding, like they're legitimately feeling this way. And no, yeah, Marina uh, Sirtis does put in a lot of work during that scene because like they keep cutting back to her and she's there's more tears every time. Yeah, because she was legitimately like really sad. And yeah, you see the rest of the cast and they're all like, you know, feeding off of that. And then that really big, the really, really close up shot of uh, Patrick Stewart. As he's, yeah, like, yeah, I actually really like. Yeah, I really like those shots of his face. Like, even though his his head's so freaking huge, it's like, <laughs> well, you just get to watch him act yeah, in your face for a second. And it's really for, nice. For a theatrical actor, he has really, really great subtle facial like acting that worked really well in that shot. I and like how he like tenses or clenches his jaw when he's when he's clearly not having a good time. Like yeah, when yeah. when they're like trying to revive Tasha and he's like kind of watching tensely in the background, you could tell that he's like clenching his jaw and like yeah, it's he's he really puts a lot of effort into it and and also apparently that last uh, speech that Tasha gives at the end in the hologram is one take and it was only the one the the one take they did. Um, oh wow, yeah, because nice work, she, Denise. She, she killed it. So yeah, I, I think I would give it a nine and a half. It's like it's not the best episode of Star Trek in the world, but. I think emotionally, it's the best episode of the season. Um, I'll say, like, the reason why I, I rate it a little lower is because uh, the character of Armis in particular frustrates me. Oh, I totally understand. Yeah. To me, it's like, that's why I think it's like a horror villain where it's kind of like, there are rules, but it's not super, like, consistent. Kind of like yeah. a, a lot of horror movies are. That's why I'm like, I'm okay with that feeling. If, if we're dealing with, like, a horror villain, they're kind of all over the place and they have different reactions to things and it's like ah, i'm okay with that you know i, I find that fine but also I, I kept i kept thinking of of the planet as viagra too not viagra too i just can stop don't worry we all it. did <laughs> everyone at home did too <laughs> admit it uh, and so we finish the most controversial episode of the first season skin of evil um tasha yar leaves us in an extremely abrupt unexpected way and unfortunately never returns. She definitely never comes back. I'm not saying that ironically. <laughs> uh, never, uh, ever, <laughs> ever. Um, the next episode is We'll Always Have Paris, which is a fun time travel romp with Picard. Um, so that'll, that'll That's be... going to be a tiny bit of whiplash. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, the, the it is episodic. So <laughs> there's, little, there's little things happening here and there. But anyway... Uh, this was newbie Star Trek. If you guys uh, wanted to uh, listen to f more episodes, find more of our bullshit about Star Trek and Ricardo being like, oh my God, what the fuck happened here? And being angry at us. Uh, you can check that out at uh, newbiestartrek.com. That's N-E-W-B-I-E startrek.com. Or wherever else you find your podcasts. We are on pretty much every podcast platform now. Also, we we're have- We're also on Amy OnlyFans. <laughs> No, we're not, guys. What if I started an OnlyFans at, for the for the podcast, and it was just those promos? <laughs> just the promos, and then um, never just, mind. Just, <laughs> just, just and, and just and just like f like stills of of various characters in compromising positions so from yes. the show. Yeah, like they, yeah. it's just a like perfect still where Riker is just bent forward. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, as he often is, because he's he's often in, in a variety of fun poses. Uh, oh, yeah. that may also, be that may be legally questionable <laughs> we don't know uh, that cbs swoops in and they're like we want that only fans money yeah, yeah. <laughs> stop stealing it from us uh all, we also have another podcast it's the fugitive frames film podcast it is a podcast where we discuss not just star trek but all sorts of films and topics it's a general film and show podcast uh Last week, uh, Ricardo released the Christmas episode 
bad yeah. Christmas movies episode. Yeah, with uh, right in time for Christmas. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, the, you 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 lampshaded very well in the episode by saying like these release constantly throughout the year. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Um, you, and you did it with our, our good friends Drusha and Savannah, and it was nice to hear them because I hadn't heard from them in a while. So yeah, that was a fun uh, sorry if you listen to that and then listen to this. Uh, I should have included a message where I talk about how like we couldn't get uh jerusha was out of town and she, she i couldn't hand her the equipment that she needed so mm. we had to use uh zoom on her phone uh to do I think the she recording. sounded fine i, I honestly was okay. not like oh this is weird i think she was good yeah. all right yeah. well, you know yeah. well then good yeah. then forget it forget i said that <laughs> <laughs> and what's the what's the next episode coming out uh the next episode we're doing is um god damn it now i'm drawing a blank it's Dr. it's a Dre horror episode motherf- <laughs> <laughs> it's a horror a horror episode a horror episode uh, uh it's a i want to say is it uh psychological thrillers i think someone is the like one that. with rick yeah 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 oh okay that'll be that'll be fun because rick um, yeah rick's super into that so he had a lot to say but, yeah yeah yes that was, that was so that'll be um That'll be coming out the the first of the month, I think. Cool, cool. I'm first week I am, of the month. First month. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy these are back because I look forward to them. So yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. good. It's good. Also, we have a YouTube channel, uh, Fugitive Games, <laughs> where uh, we play, we do let's plays and uh, streams, and sometimes we have reviews. And I'm trying to work on some like scripted content stuff. But uh, in the meantime, uh, we're we're let's we're we're currently going through uh, Batman. Uh, the Enemy Within, which is the second Telltale game, and L.A. Noir. Um, we actually finished recording Batman: The Enemy Within last weekend, and that was really good. That was a really, really good ending to that story, and I think it honestly had some of the best versions of Batman characters I think I've ever seen. <laughs> so it was uh, it's I, a breath of fresh air if you're sick of the same old stuff. That yeah, for sure. I don't remember. Fi- so I finished it clearly because I, I it's I passed both seasons, but I don't remember how it ends. So well, oh. depending on how you played that's it, true, it ends that's true. Very. I saw uh, after we finished the game, I looked at little bits here and there, um, based on how you play. Mm-hmm. Depending on how you play, episodes four and five are completely different. Not just oh, like yeah, different yeah. choices. Yeah. Like you are in different scenes. These scenes do not even exist in either. That's what it's I like a- to hear. Like yeah, that, for, that's what for, you want from a game pe- like yeah. those. For people, for people that don't know how the game is played, it's like a choose your own adventure video game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's Dan uh, jokingly. Uh, it's not even that big of a joke where he he described it as a like a um, like a dating sim because a lot oh, yeah. of the game is trying to figure out who you want to be chummy with. You know? Yeah, yeah. it's and, it's <laughs> it's managing a, a set of relationships. That yeah, that's yeah. pretty much the entire like point of the enemy yeah, within yeah. by the the third episode it's clear that you're just juggling yeah like your your relationships with people and it's so interesting because the fifth episode especially is basically they basically made two different episodes and depending on which way you went it's a completely different thing altogether it's crazy like it, it's really interesting how much time they spent on that and it's I should look uh, at the alternate take. I'm 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 interested. Yeah, it makes me want to play it on my own and just play it the other way and and, and see how you it'll should. go. And you should do it on a non-switch platform to check and see <laughs> just how graphically <laughs> compromised it was. Oh, it's bad. I've I've seen some footage of it <laughs> on PC and it's like, oh yeah, that looks way better. <laughs> There's textures on everything. <laughs> um why textures? <laughs> I played That's it. That's actually I, surprising. They, I played. I think I played all their games except the. Oof, there's one based off another game, and I can't remember the, the Border, name. Uh, Tales from Borderlands. the Borderlands. That's it. That's the only yeah. one I haven't played. Which is funny. It's that's for a lot of Telltale fans. They consider that the best Telltale I know, game. I know. I which know. is really interesting. Uh, but I don't know. I, I I don't know if I need Borderlands context to enjoy it. So yeah, that, that's yeah. kind of the issue for I, me. I haven't too. played it either. So and I, I don't. I, played I don't. I played enough Borderlands to know I don't want to play Borderlands. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just a, it's just a loot shooter. You just go around go, doing the same loop over and over again to just get a bunch of items, and I, it wasn't fun to me. But cloud trap. Clearly, a bunch of people find it really funny uh, and fun, but uh, not me. I just found it stupid. <laughs> 
<laughs> I I did play all the Walking Dead games, which were really cool. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That those I mean that was their claim to fame, right? That's why they were. Yeah, yeah that was like the first one that really blew them up because they were doing adventure games before Walking Dead, but the Walking yeah, Dead was the one the that Back like to the really Future like, game that was really bad. That Back to the Future game. I, I, didn't I think they also did it. like Sam and Max so, games before. So yeah. ba- the Back to the Future one is really glitchy because it was like their first That's one. why. I, I just but, I was just like I can't get past this fucking kitchen se- sequence. But but it's pretty cool. The storyline's like canon as well. Oh, is it supposed to be canon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's not like the TV, sh- the animated show where it was just like bullshit. And they just what I no, remember no, no, most canon. about that game is how much they wanted to like uh, push how impressive their Michael J. Fox sound alike was. That's he, true. He yeah. was impressive. Yeah. No, he was good. He yeah. was good at it. And they even got like, uh, the reason it's canon is because Bob Gale came back and wrote wrote for it so oh, that's true yeah yeah i forgot about that mm-hmm. i didn't even realize that okay cool cool yeah, yeah so so quit knocking it marvin <laughs> well it's unplayable so <laughs> says you is, is that but anyway this is a star trek podcast and then uh next no it week, isn't <laughs> next not week, anymore <laughs> next the week venom, we'll the venom podcast <laughs> Uh, uh, stay uh, tuned for a full <laughs> review of Venom. Stay, stay tuned for a like turd a turd. Win. Win. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the that's the line, right? Where you knew just shut up and enjoy so it. You will be this armless, legless, faceless thing, <laughs> won't you? Rolling down the street like a turd in the wind. Yes, <laughs> that delivery. But he was having so much fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is that is a great moment in the movie where the where the venom is just basically like, "Don't worry, I'm a loser too." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, next week we're gonna watch. We'll always have Paris. We're gonna go through some fun Picard French time travel shenanigans. We might uh, see some chest hair. Might see some chest hair. Might see some multi data. Uh, might see some fencing. Might see some Paris. Might see some Eiffel Tower. Might see some fromage and wine. Uh, the French an omelette du fromage. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, hey, may I may I suggest how you close this episode with what with with a song? Oh, please, please uh, close it with the Eminem song that he recorded for the Venom soundtrack. <laughs> I thought no, you were going to go, f- <laughs> 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 I love, I love. <laughs>